The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Mesquite, Nevada on your new fire apparatus, job number 32135. Please utilize this job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the front bumper, on the right and left side of your front bumper, just underneath you'll find two open-ended tow hooks. Moving up onto the face of the bumper on the right and left side, you'll find dual air horns. Moving just inward of that location, you'll find two electronic siren and PA speaker system. Located just up on top of the bumper, you'll find a tubbed storage area that is covered. Inside that tub storage area, you'll find an inch and a half swivel discharge. Located in the front in the uh, driver's side, you'll find an air intake. Moving up from that location, you'll find the headlight cluster, which houses the high beam on the inside and the low beam on the outer edge, also the turn indicator. Moving up from that, you'll find two forward-facing emergency lights. Located on the driver's side, you'll find your 20 amp shoreline inlet, and you'll also find a side-facing emergency light. Let's take a look at the panel. Let's start in the upper left-hand corner of your pump panel. This is the module referred to as the foam system. This is the on-off button for your foam system. Moving just inside of that, when that turns on, you'll find the power button, and then also just to the right, you'll find your foam button. Down in the lower section, there are controls for paging through, foam prime, enter, and also all of your up and down for increasing throughout the menu. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll find when flow is foam, it will be flashing. Moving to the right, you'll find the foam level. This is a tank indicator. As we move to the right into the blue section, this is your Hercules CAFS system. This is your on-off switch, and then you have the option for manual or auto. There's also in the upper right-hand corner, your air pressure, and just below a digital readout for the airflow. Moving further down, you'll find an oil temp gauge and also a high oil temp indicator. Let's move slightly to the right into the gray area. This is going to be your master intake and master discharge. There is just beneath those two gauges, the vacuum and pressure. These are the test gauge ports for conducting your testing. We'll just move to the right from this point. This is gonna be your engine information. This is a diagnostic area. First in the upper left-hand corner, the gauge is your oil pressure gauge. Moving to the right, you'll find your water temperature gauge. And then as we move to the center, the large gauge, this will be your tachometer. Moving down to the left side, you can see this is your volts. And then moving all the way to the far right, this will be your fuel for the amount of fuel in your apparatus. Let's take a look at the very top here. You do have a check transmission light. If that is illuminated, it will be in an amber color. And then we move to the left-hand sides of the gauges here, we'll find red for oil pressure. In the center, you'll find a stop engine light, which will also be red. And then down at the lower section, this is your amperages for your battery. To the right side, you'll find a indicator that would be in the red color for water temperature. And then just beneath that, you'll find a check engine, which would also be in an amber color. And then if less than a quarter tank of fuel, you will find that the fuel indicator will illuminate that you have low fuel. In the center, you'll find an audible alarm. We'll go ahead and move now to the pressure throttle governor. This is the check engine light. If illuminated, it would be yellow. Located in the center, you'll find a digital readout for the RPMs. And then to the right, if illuminated, it would be in red, is the stop engine. Moving down from that location, you'll find the orange menu button, which allows you to select through the various menus. 
Located between the menu button and the silence, you'll find additional engine diagnostic information. All the way to the right in red, you'll find a silence button. And then moving down just beneath that, you'll find pressure or RPMs. Those are selections that you'll pick. Either you'll be in the pressure mode or you'll be in throttle control mode. Located in the center, you'll find a digital readout. And to the far right is your ready for your throttle position and then green also a preset. The large wheel will be the increased pressure or throttle and push in the center to move back to the idle position. You will find two audible speakers located here. Moving up, you'll also find an auto trans temp. This is in red if indicated. And then below you have a gauge reading the actual transmission temperature. To the right hand side, you'll find a water level from refill, quarter, half, three quarter, and full. We'll move down now to the discharges. First working across the top here, number one, number two, and the two and a half inch cross lays. These are all water and foam capable. The thing I'd like to point out is all of the discharges are color coded and also individually labeled. Just beneath that, you'll find your CAF's discharge air valve. And as we move to the right, your panel lights. Beneath that, you'll find a green light that will illuminate if your pump is properly engaged. Beneath that, you'll find the driver's side flood. As we move to the right, you'll find your TFT monitor operation station. This is for your monitor on top of your apparatus, and this is the control pad for that. Moving down further, you'll find your Husky 12 foam system specifications and also the instructions. And to the right, you'll find this Pierce placard. We'll talk about that in a little bit further. And just beneath that, you'll find a warning label that only trained personnel should operate this equipment and you should have read the owner's manual. Here's some close-ups of those things that we just talked about. Let's go ahead and talk about this. Pierce maintenance schedule, 150, 200, and 250 PSI. The associated GPMs on the left-hand side and your RPMs on the right. There is further information regarding the maintenance schedule with inside the owner's manual. Let's now move uh, just to the right of this location. We'll find your deluge discharge. And as we move to the right, you'll find the passenger rear discharge and then also the driver rear discharge. There are two discharges in the rear. Moving further to the right, you'll find your primer. And just beneath that, you'll find a caution label regarding the use of that primer. Moving down from that location, we'll find the number one two and a half inch discharge and the number three discharge. Moving further to the uh, right and slightly down, you'll find a warning label here regarding pressurized caps and associated hazards while removing those caps under pressure. To the right, you'll find the tank fill and recirculating line. And then just beneath that, you'll find the number four passenger side discharge. This is your engine cooler. It is a twist, not a pull. And there's also a warning label that fall hazard may occur and you should not ride on the side of your vehicle. Here's some close-ups of the lower section. We'll talk about those next. Let's start down in the lower left-hand corner. This is your CAF's air outlet. You can see the outlet just below. As we move to the uh, lower section, you'll find the associated discharges. These are the drains, which are individually labeled and color coded. You also have an air inlet. At the bottom of the pump panel, you'll find additional drains. For example, number one cross lay, driver's side rear. This is gonna be your two and a half inch auxiliary drain. It is a female inlet. And this is the placard regarding the type of pump that you have, which is a hail. And further moving to the right, you'll find the pump drain. Moving all the way to the far right hand side of the pump panel, you'll find your manifold drain and also your flush valve drain. You'll also find a headset jack and also a push to talk on the exterior of the apparatus. I would like to point out this warning label regarding foam failure and the possibility that mixing of your foams is not advised. There is an auxiliary foam function here. This is an inlet which has a strainer and also a tank drain. Inside the pan door, you'll find your foam level in the horizontal position as it's currently in. This is in the operations position. If you move it to the vertical position, you'll find it in the fill position. 
Overhead, you'll find the number one, number two, and two and a half inch cross lay. As we look in the dunnage area, this is for your foam system. This is your fill location at the top and a sight gauge on the lower portion. We're now looking at top of the dunnage area once again. That is your master stream device. In the dunnage area, you'll also find your water fill location for top fill and also your foam fill for foam tank A. There is access points you can see here located with a slam latch on the very bottom. As I look to the rear of the apparatus, this would be where your divided hose bed is and also on top where your ladder storage is. On top of the cab, you will find a warning label here that this surface is slippery and that you should not walk on it. And as we move down underneath the apparatus, you'll find your foam pump intake drain and also foam pump discharge drain. Up in the first compartment, you'll find an indicator when plugged into shore power. This green light will illuminate, telling you that you have shore power activated. This charges one, the auto charge system, and also allows you to have power to your air compressor. In the very base section of this compartment, you'll find a pull-out drawer. Also within some of the compartments, you'll find additional grab handles inside near the shelf area and also LED lighting. Just in front of the rear wheel, you will find bottle storage locations with retaining straps. As we move to the rear section where the rear wheel is, you'll find additional SCBA bottle storage, but you'll also find your diesel fill and also your DEF fill. The blue cap is a 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. You can see that the door here allows access to the blue cap moving in the other direction you'll gain access to the silver cap which is your diesel. Inside this compartment you'll also find you have a pegboard style tool board. There is a latch on the left hand side and also a retaining lock on the right hand side of the hinge side. We're now to the rear compartment. You can see you have an adjustable shelf and also the grab handle and LED lighting. Let's go ahead and move to the very rear of your apparatus. Down at the very bottom, you'll find a folding wheel chalk in addition with a pull-out style step. Here's a quick image of the rear of the apparatus. Let's break down some of the components here. Starting on your left-hand side, also on the right, you'll find your brake, turn, and also reverse light cluster. Moving over to the inside section, you'll have, you'll have an emergency warning light. And as we move up from that location, you'll find this cupped style switch which will control your work lights. Moving up from that, you'll find you have additional rear-facing lights for scene lights, and then above that, you'll find your rear-facing emergency warning lights. All the way to the very top, you have a 360-degree emergency light. We also have, which we mentioned earlier, the two 2.5-inch rear discharges. Those are located in the same location. You also have some warning labels here regarding riding on the apparatus, which is not advised, and also that there is an entanglement hazard with those hoses coming off above. Just beneath that, you'll find your LED traffic advisor, and then directly in the center, you'll find your backup, a reverse camera. You'll also find full down steps. There are three located, two on the lower section and one on the upper left-hand side of your apparatus. Here's some close-ups of those images we just talked about. We'll work through those now. This is the rear scene lights. This was that cup switch that I talked about earlier. As we move to the uh, rear two and a half inch, this is the rear discharge. Moving to the right, passenger side discharge. Once again, there is a warning here regarding those pressurized caps and we're moving those caps. Close up with the traffic advisor and backup camera. Down in the lower section of the back shelf, you'll find a pullout shelf here. This is the release mechanism. The upper shelf has an additional release mechanism on the right hand side also. We're now to the passenger side of the vehicle, pull out shelf, bottom section has on the right side the release mechanism, grab handle to reach up above, and LED lighting. Moving forward of this location, you'll find this pan door, which houses your equipment rack hydraulic reservoir. Just forward of that, this is going to be in front of the rear wheel, this is the SCBA bottle storage location for two bottles. Located directly in the center in the emergency light over the rear wheel. There is also an additional label that's difficult to see in this image. This is a caution label or warning label regarding you of hot exhaust temperatures and be cautious as to where you park your vehicle. As we look inside this compartment you'll see once again LED lighting, adjustable shelves, and also a grab handle. Let's move to the midsection of your apparatus. We'll find an additional warning label here regarding entanglement because of those cross loads coming off above you. 
There's also an additional warning label here regarding not riding on the side of your apparatus and also that warning for pressurized caps and the associated hazards while undoing that cap while it could be under pressure. There are two two and a half inch discharges on this side. Also large diameter intake with the Pierce logo American flag eagle. As we move to the very top, this is your powered equipment rack. There is an on off switch here and also a lift or lower. Also to the right down in the lower section, you'll find your cab lift. This is a master switch and also instructions on how to operate that. Down in the lower section, you'll find all your associated drains. As we move to the cab itself, you'll find a telescoping floodlight. And also in the same vicinity, you'll find an LED tank light. Moving back down, you'll find this close up here of your powered equipment rack module, master switch on and off, and then a lift up or down. Here's a close up of the two two and a halfs and also your large diameter intake. Inside the pan door, you'll also find your water strainer. This is your cab lift. Down at the very bottom, you'll find all your associated drains. Let's go ahead and go inside the rear section of the cab. We'll first start on the passenger side. On the right hand side, you'll see of this, the door, you have additional warning labels here. We'll talk about uh, some of the components within the cab in just a moment. Inside, you'll find in the rear, the heater control knob. Uh, this is also the module which controls the fan speed and also temperature setting. Overhead, you'll find your air conditioning controls. Inside each of the compartments, you'll find once again shelves, LED lighting, and also shore power connection. This is located in the center. You'll find a keyed compartment here. This is from the rear looking forward to the front of the driver's seat, and we're going to go over that in just a few moments. Once again, point of entry for personnel, you'll find this warning label. What I would also like to point out is your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, SRS. This is the indication of that airbag. Just beneath that, you'll find a warning label here and not to block this area or mount any equipment in this area for the safety of that airbag. Also, you'll find on your dash, you'll find three 12 volt power supplies. The first one on the left with silver is a barrel style and the two to the right are going to be USB. This is your vehicle data recorder port. Just a general view here of the passenger seat. Let's uh, move to the left hand side. First we'll cover this item which is the on off switch for the music through your AM FM CD player. You'll also find a set of switches here. Mechanical siren, siren brake, driver's side scene, and also passenger side scene. All of the uh, switches below are future locations if needed. To the right, you'll find your intercom system. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, driver's area. When you open the door, you'll find that the steps will drop down into position. Also on the door panel itself, you'll find these warning labels. As we move up above that, you'll find the automatic window control and also door control. You'll also find the red lock mechanism. Down in the lower section, you'll find an LED flashing light if the batteries are on. This will illuminate for firefighter safety and traffic. And as we look inside the cab, you'll find your step compressor. As you can see, it's green, indicating that it's on. And to the right, you'll find your auto charging system. When plugged into shore power, this will activate and maintain your batteries. I'd like to talk a little bit about this placard. This is the manufactured by Pierce. Let's go ahead and go over that now. First in the upper corner, you'll find manufactured August 2018 job number of 32135 and it also has all of your information regarding gross vehicle weight ratings tire and cold inflation in addition with the VIN number and then all of the components fluid capacities and fluid types on the floor you'll find your mechanical siren just up at about uh, left knee height you'll find this set of switches this is a audible warning also a command zone diagnostic port and also your diagnostic port here in green You'll also find your ABS and engine diagnostic switches for those ports. 
Let's go ahead and move upward from this location. This is where you'll find your master battery switch on the left in red. And then you'll also find your pump shift. This is going to be the road to pump and from pump to road. You need two indicators, which are both pump engaged in green and OK to pump once you've exited the cab. Let's go ahead and move up from this location. You'll find the ignition start switch. You'll also find a panel dim for rocker switch, which will dim or brighten your panel lights in addition with your park and headlights. Moving further up from this location, you'll find your height at 10 feet, 6 inches, length 32 feet, 9.87 inches, and your gross vehicle weight rating at 49,800 pounds. If you make any changes in your apparatus, I advise that you change this placard. Let's go ahead and talk about the dash. As we look to the left, these are the components within your dash. You have your transmission, oil, DEF level, fuel level, front air, rear air. As we move to the top, you'll find your water temperature, tachometer, speedometer, and voltage. Let's go ahead and move just to the right. You'll find some additional diagnostic information that may illuminate if necessary. And further to the right, you'll find your OK to engage the high idle, high idle, and the load manager. Moving further to the right, you'll find all of your components for the operator. We'll go ahead and cover those individually. First, you have your climate control. Just down from that, you'll find this set of switches for your retarder on and off, auto apply, DPF regen, your DPF regen inhibit, which is the red switch, an SRS fault, which is illuminated if there is a fault, and then your mirror heat. Down from that location, you'll find your front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, two future switch locations on the outside, driver side flood, and passenger side flood. Next will be your Pierce command zone, a tremendous amount of information right here on this display screen. I would advise you to work through the menu and consult your operator's manual. Moving just slightly to the right, you'll find your pull to apply system parking brake and push to release, and also your radio push to talk. This is your Allison transmission pad with a note for pump in drive. As we move further to the right on the console, you'll find your window controls. And as we move further to the right on top, you'll find your main mirror control. Located on top of the engine tunnel is where you'll find all of the fuse locations and relay switches. Just to the uh, rear of this location is where you'll find your transmission oil check and also your engine oil checks. Let's look overhead. You'll find your emergency master, roof light, front warning light, side warning light, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and opticom. Just to the right of this location, you'll find several future switch locations and also your siren brake. And all the way to the right, you'll find your radio system. This is an AM, FM weather band and also CD. Located in the center, you'll find your fans and also your rope for your air horns. Located in the center, you'll find your wheel and traffic advisor and also your siren and PA functions. Located in the center, you'll find this red flashing light if your doors are open or anything is ajar. Please do not move your apparatus. Also located in the center is your Pierce seatbelt information display. As you can see, red indicating someone is in the seat, although they are not belted. Green would indicate that they are in the seat and belted. Congratulations, Mesquite, Nevada, on your new fire apparatus, job number 32135. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video or future questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.